yes people it's loki man 07 back with another youtube video and in this video i'm going to be talking about none other than moon knight yes i have mentioned that i'm going to be doing this breakdown months ago when the show was actually running but i've been busy i'm not really a content creator this stuff takes a lot of research okay and also takes a lot of time with the editing and the, the blah 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 so you know I'm sorry, but I made it, right? Obviously, this show, the whole point of this video is to show you the occult leanings of the show, of course. Okay? But we're going to talk about what's really going on here in the show, okay? So first of all, I'm going to talk about the show in general. It's about a guy called Mark okay that's what it's truly about it's about a guy called mark that has multiple personality disorder okay and of course um the god Khonshu of the egyptian pantheon now um Khonshu wants mark to enact his vengeance or his will in the physical world because um the gods are supposed to be of course from a different plane of existence basically they're from the um the conscious world or the astral plane whatever you want to call it right as the show will show you um on on, on a two-dimensional level this is um a superhero adventure marvel has gods and stuff within its um within its roster of characters from any mythology i've explained that in previous videos and then they have allegories allegory characters as i like to call them because they're like references to gods for example iron man and vulcan right captain america and Ares, um wanda and lilith slash isis uh, america chavez and venus right there's so many right um tell me a character and i'll tell you who they are in the, um <coughs> in any pantheon right <laughs> right so but i'm gonna go into the story as i'm going through but what i'm here to talk about is that the the obviously the occult nature of the comic book industry and of course the um cinematic industry because um these things come from occult beliefs okay it's, it, it ties into the history of america um the history of britain and um it's occult leanings okay and how that got into hollywood and how it's become becoming okay normal right occult beliefs is more likely the beliefs of the of the average liberal-minded person we're not going to get too deep into that right but i'm just going to leave clues because i'm not into political things okay right so anyway um like we always do we're going to talk about this show okay uh, on a three-dimensional level okay we're going to go into the things that the average man doesn't clock so let's go okay so <clears throat> people i always say that um you know there's physical representation representation of tarot cards in uh disney movies as well as marvel movies um this is all this is also the same thing with moon knight okay um there are two major numbers that are overarching this show the number 12 and the number 20 okay and I'll, and I'll get into that but first right you have six characters okay you have the main character who is split into two he's two people he's mark and steven okay first of all as i always state the dates and times of the show's release is what will be adhered to so this show started on the 30th of march under the constellation aries 
So once again, this is an attribute, just like I said last year with, um, what's it called, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Falcon representing the great Hawk, the great Falcon, whatever, Horus, okay, it's about rebirth, okay, and of course, in the Falcon and Winter Soldier, Falcon was reborn as a new superhero, rebirth is the main theme of this show as well okay now how are they doing this they're using mark to represent of course the month of march and the constellation aries which is ruled by the planet mars mark and mars is the same name okay right stephen who is the other half of the main character is um <clears throat> the main theme okay this rebirth he's supposed to represent the hanged man okay he's the man that is um the all good right and the wise the meek that shall inherit the earth okay and um, this is symbolized all throughout the show. If you look at the hangman card, which is represented by the number 12, Jesus is also linked to the number 12. This is why he has 12 disciples, right? Um, <clears throat> that He's always waking up and tied to his bed by one ankle. That is to represent the tied to the tree by one ankle of the hangman, okay? And if you think that's just like touching at straws, I could go in and in on this character. Like his name is Stephen Grant, okay? The one granted the crown. Stephen means crown or crowned, okay? And of course, he is the crowned one. The the um the one who um you know is given the new kingdom. If you think that is a stretch, let's look at some other similarities. The hangman card um it's zodiac sign is of course pisces the divine mother and child mary and jesus as you can see he has a relationship with his mom that's the overarching principle okay is is about stephen and the mother the divine mother okay now let's get into some more links what else links stephen to jesus he dies and resurrects right he dies and resurrects during the end of days, during a judgment, okay? And that's the whole thing about being the hanged man, the crucified one, right? Like this imagery when he's being killed of Jesus and the falcon of Horus or the eagle, whatever. There's literally when he gets shot, you can directly see Horus in the background, right? Just to show you, yo, this represents Jesus or Horus, okay? Let's continue. You got Layla. Layla, of course, means uh, night, darkness, okay? Or the sky, right? Linked to the mother goddess or linked to goddesses on the left hand side like not of um norse mythology or nix or night which is where we get the word night from is from the goddess okay that's who layla represents and of course it is the in is the love interest of mark okay which follows i'll get into that later then you have the then you have Khonshu, right? Khonshu's being Khonshu. I'm not going to get into that too much until later when I go into what is actually going on with the design and everything of that character. But of course you have the, the two villains, okay? And that will be Harrow, who is representing Anubis, and um, Amut, who is playing herself, of course. The, 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 she's playing... You know the 
dragon of chaos with a clock in her stomach. Okay, well, I'll get into that later, right? <laughs> Let's get into this. The first thing that ha the first character you ever see appear is Harold, right? And Harold represents, of course, uh, Saturn, the judge, okay? Um, in the Egyptian pantheon, it can be linked to Anubis. And I've mentioned that character multiple times, how it's linked to uh, God on the left-hand side, right? So it's the left-hand path. And of course, um, uh, Anubis is a dog, okay? This is, you know, and uh, an inverted, the, the word dog inverted of, is of course God, okay? So it's the judge of death, okay? Um, and um, so, of course, an aspect of that is going to be involved in the show. And, of course, the show is a cult anyway, so it's Splatan, right? He represents um, Anubis. He's got the scales of Anubis on his arms. That's the first thing you see is the scales of Anubis, okay? And um, he... he um, the first thing you see is a gesture, okay? The very first thing you see is a gesture because he dips his finger, his, his middle finger, his, uh, you know, the flip, flip you off finger into water, okay? And then he drinks and then turns the cup upside down and walks into the light, okay? All right, that's the first thing you see. It's never explained. You come to know who this character is, but that, what he just did there is never explained. I'm going to explain it to you. Alright, so people, the more you know, the more you understand, the more you get a grasp of what you're being shown when you watch shows, movies, etc. Okay, and um, I already explained what harrow represents both on the, the two-dimensional level which is what the show is actually showing you and then of course how it links to other gods or aspects of certain principles all right so here's here's where it gets weird okay see this dipping the finger into the water first of all the water always represents the um the liminal so when you go down through water you go into the subliminal right and i've explained on this channel that the subliminal mind the dreamscape etc is in the sorry in the mythologies and the occult the same place as the death realm they are linked okay and you see this when um mark slash Stephen is killed and what does he ha what happens he falls into water down into the underworld which is linked to his actual thoughts like a dream okay as the show shows and Tarawet explains which I will get into later All right but um so here's here's the thing about the hand okay the hand of course is just a hand but your fingers are supposed to represent, to some degree, um, the planets. I think um, your thumb is Mars, your index finger is Jupiter, your middle finger is Saturn, mm -hmm. right? Your little finger is Mercury, uh, uh, and I think your ring finger is the Sun, right? Um, all right, so. Um, so here we got the, uh, this Harrow character dipping his finger into this, into this water. And this explains everything that Harrow is trying to do. So yeah, basically what Harrow is doing here, he's, um, dipping Saturn, right? The finger that represents Saturn, so that's death, time, and limit into the death realm. So he's pushing death down into the into the uh, the astral plane or the underworld, 
so he can reap the benefits and then he drinks and then he turns the cup upside down like it's a sand timer right <clears throat> that's the symbology of that scene and it represents exactly what he is and exactly what he's about to do in this show and it's the very first scene you see it's the first character you see when this um, show starts right um this character harrow like i said represents a version of saturn who is pan okay and anubis um all of those characters represent the same principle the judges of death time and limit judgment the great judges that's what um harrow walks around doing judging people right um <clears throat> in the name of the great dragon as you will come to see as the show he wants to resurrect this great dragon and we're going to get into that more as this show goes on but you will see that he himself is the number 20 which is the judgment card if you look at the judgment card it's just um you'll see that there's an entity right that seems to be using an instrument or giving a signal and then below that entity you can see the dead rising harrow himself raises spirits from the underworld um as his powers in this show okay um he's calling upon the dead okay and we'll get into that like i said as we go through okay people i just want to go back on something to do with mars okay right so as you know stephen grant and <clears throat> and mark specter inhabit the same body okay stephen grant mark specter inhabit the same body but mark is the main focus okay right he is the one that is rising out of stephen as the show plays along and like i keep saying i'll get to that but we will get to that right um obviously right you've got this principle of mars and this show right wants to adhere to the principle of mars so much it has sacrificed what um moon knight is in varying places for example the character layla doesn't exist and the character of uh stephen grant is not like stephen grant in this show okay they've adjusted it so the show brings about the principles what i'm talking about here so they've changed multiple things right the reason why stephen grant can't be a version of um his comic book self anyway is because he's too close to a character like tony stark or to strong masculine uh, masculine power right um you will not see a character that has that is masculine like tony stark in the mcu again okay definitely not in this phase four it's not happening right all of the men don't know what they're doing they're confused they have feminine traits and um, you can't really if you lean on them right they crumble right they need they need help right you'll never see characters like that in the mcu going forward okay it's done ever since the end game it's done all right they're all gonna need this woman okay so anyway and we'll, we'll, let's get into that right now okay so Layla who is completely not in the comic books at all right has been made to be of course the consort or the wife of Mark or Mars and I said that her name Layla means darkness which is attributed to night right um <clears throat> but check this out in ancient Roman religion and myth Nereo or Neri, Nerine, or how we pronounce that, was an ancient war goddess and the personification of Valor. Right, so first of all, Valor, right, just means, um, like, able to face danger, like, courage in the face of danger, basically. And of course, it, 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 its main meaning is towards the battlefield, okay, right? that's all it means right because she's a god of goddess of battle right um she was the partner of mars in the ancient cult practices 
and was sometimes identified with the goddess Bellona. Now I always say what what, what I always say is just these are, uh, are aspects of Venus or aspects of the moon or aspects of the earth. So the names give it away give it away, right? Venus is what? Bell beauty. Okay, so Bellone Bellona. Okay, another right? Um and occasionally and she's occasionally identified with the goddess Minerva. My last Hulk, my, my last um, MCU occult breakdown was called Hawkeye Mythology and Minerva because these goddesses, these characters can be I always, always identified through Minerva because they goddesses of battle. All right. Right, so let's get into Minerva, right? Because, right, Minerva is the Roman goddess of wisdom, justice, law, victory, and the sponsor of arts, trade, and strategy, right? Minerva is not a patron of violence such as Mars, but of, def but of defensive war only. From the 2nd century BC onward, the Roman equated her with the Greek goddess Athena. Minerva is one of the three Roman deities in the, the capital capital line triad along with jupiter and juno so <clears throat> what's that's basically saying is that she represents war but strategy wisdom right art now minerva didn't always represent that Re minerva also represented violence okay as well because she's athena okay right so what does it say about Athena? Often given the epithet of Pallas, is an ancient Greek goddess associated with wisdom, handicraft, and warfare, who was later synchronized with the um, Roman goddess Minerva. Athena was regarded as the patron and the protectress of various cities across Greece, particularly the city of Athens. So that's where Athens gets its name from, Athena, right? Uh, the reason why. All of these goddesses is the same character in different locations, in different cultures, right? But Athena, as you can see with Layla, right? The men are confused, but she's got everything down, right? Same like same like um, Sylvie. Um, all of these female characters going forward are going to be like this, okay? They're all going to be like this. If there's a if there's a, a show that are, that's an MCU and it's got a male character's name on it, there will be a female character that will be like Minerva next to him, right? It's as simple as that. Or it'll be one of the three goddesses. It's going to be some Earth representation or Venus representation or Moon representation. But more time, it's going to be the goddess of battle because it's superhero films, right? all gonna have the same personality as well they're gonna be stoic and masculine like just like Minerva I've explained this in my previous video so I won't go any further okay people so I've been talking for a little while here okay a good while about um, this TV show and you know equating characters to mythological characters etc and what I'm trying to say here is that the show is actually an ode to those principles right using dates and times right disney does an ode to these characters but you have to suspend a lot of belief here right that means that the create the, the source of the of the the of the comic right the so the comic the source which gives the inspiration also has to be a cult and then that also means that the um that the showrunners have to be into the occult as well. Now, that's not as hard as it seems, right? Hollywood has always been a little bit weird and had, a, like, you know, very different views. It doesn't seem that much so because um, people in the Western world have completely different values than they did 50 years ago, and their values are actually like Hollywood's now. Right, things that people would just be like, oh my god, I can't believe they do that. Right, nowadays, it's so normalized, it's unbelievable. I won't get into some of those things, or any of them, right? But, 
unless you're in it it looks a bit weird okay anyway hollywood has always had this occult thing to it okay it's like going to university in the united states if you go to the university in the united states and you start to get high what you what's the first hurdle you come across you come across the, the frat the fraternity aspect now the first fraternity aspect is your is the first time you will encounter these gods names right or pay them any um any adherence whatsoever right? but that's where you first learn about them about this greek mythology and then it goes from there because the, the 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 more you get into these little clubs right the more these characters will start to pop up and just look it up it's not it's it's not any hidden thing right what's all that alpha alpha psi whatever five stuff that they talk about those it's all greek right it's not hidden trust me so then you can get writers that are inspired by the occult because when you go to university anyway say for example you're doing a lecture on how to on literature literature right right what are they going to do they're going to break the literature down to the principles that they come from and there will be examples of that also in this video okay well first of all is co uh, is the comic book industry linked to any occultism whatsoever right what the most famous comic book writer that i know of is probably alan moore and he's a self-proclaimed wizard bro there are others like grant morrison St uh, stephen moore right there's others and like i say the creators of this moonlight comic book right um look at their their history of comics even if like it's not very common for people to announce what they're into but if you look up the creators of moon knight and just look at their body of work everything from ghost rider to werewolf by night and stuff like that all of those comics every single one of them are occult they're all based on occult beliefs um some of their famous work, most famous works like ghost rider is about making a contract with satan right i think mephesto is the most is the closest to judeo-christian um version of like the hades character or the devil that they have in marvel where it's like contract based etc etc um soul take soul binding contracts and things like that that's what ghost rider is all about it um th those are the type of things that inspire the moon knight writer so it's like the things that they're looking at to draw their characters from okay like this, this is all about inspiration so if you think what i'm saying is just way out there trust me buckle your seatbelt the problem is that with magic being in many respects a science of language you have to be very careful what you say because if you suddenly declare yourself to be a magician without any knowledge of what that entails then one day you are likely to wake up and to discover that that is exactly what you are. There is some confusion as to what magic actually is. I think that this can be cleared up if you just look at the very earliest descriptions of magic. Magic in its earliest form is often referred to as the art. I believe that this is completely literal. I believe that magic is art, and that art, whether that be writing, music, sculpture, or any other form, is literally magic. Art is, like magic, the science of manipulating symbols, words, or images to achieve changes in consciousness. The very language of magic seems to be talking as much about writing or art as it is about supernatural events. A grimoire, for example, the Book of Spells, is simply a fancy way of saying grammar. Indeed, to cast a spell is simply to spell, to manipulate words, to change people's consciousness. This is the Peter Pan story, roughly speaking. Is Peter Pan is this magical boy Pan means, Pan is the god of everything, roughly speaking, right? And so it's not an accident that he has the name Pan. 
and he's the boy that won't grow up and he's magical well that's because children are magical they can be anything they're nothing but potential and Peter Pan doesn't want to give that up why well he's got some adults around him but the main adult is Captain Hook well who the hell wants to grow up to be Captain Hook first of all you've got a hook second you're a tyrant and third you're chased by the dragon of chaos with a clock in its stomach right the crocodile it's already got a piece of you well that's what happens when you get older time has already got a piece of you and eventually it's got a taste for you and eventually it's going to eat you uh, this this analogy here by Jordan Peterson is really interesting and relates directly I don't know if you've noticed to the um, same principles of um, what Moon Knight is all about okay Dragon of Time the alligator um, and of course Pan himself who's another version of Saturn right or the satyr or say I've gone into this in the the Capricorn part of the Hawkeye video where I was talking about the kingpin and what Capricorn represents Cap Capricorn is the, the great dragon okay and it, it is ruled by what the planet Saturn okay so it's the same principle so we have Anubis in conjunction with the dragon of chaos with a clock in its stomach that clock being time judgment the passing of time okay so yes people that is that that is the goal of um of of harrow in this to uh, bring about judgment and judgment is the theme of this entire show all right um and i'm going to continue to talk about the show a bit further but the reason why the whole purpose of just showing that clip from jordan peterson and his and his lecture and you can f find him talking about all sorts of Disney movies and breaking them down down to their principles kind of like what I do but with education within the education system because he's the most famous uh, Western university lecturer I know of anyway um, in the Western world <clears throat> he's uh, quite controversial but of course with, with his own opinion but as you can see when he's teaching psychology and literature how he breaks things down he breaks them down to the finest principles exactly what the artist is trying to solicit right so he's gonna he's gonna say the same thing he knows who pan is he knows who the dragon of time the clock in his stomach is that he he knows exactly what he's saying what he knows exactly what the principle of pan is right and um <clears throat> in in the t this, this show moon knight right um in the first four episodes right the characters have to follow the scarab beetle the whole thing is to chase the sun the scarab beetle represents the, the, the scarab rolling the dung or rolling the sun through through um through the season so all for all four of these characters that represent planets or gods or what have you are just going through time right going through time so they, and right now they're passing through the constellation aries so it's the rise of of uh of of mark yeah, as you've seen mark is in the subliminal and as the um story progresses he becomes the the the, the main character all the way up until episode four he's the main character right so stephen grant starts off the, of the, as the main character uh jupiter and the reason why it's jupiter is because he's he's linked to the the sun right and a s-o-n right um and what is the previous constellation pisces uh, the constellation of the divine mother and child so um you go from Pisces into Aries it's the rise of Mars or the rise of March or Mark and now um, Mark rises he chases the scarab beetle he beats Saturn out and um, 
what happens he's he's um he, he he's killed now you got to remember right this is the same principle of jesus if if you take the whole story of jesus right and instead of thinking oh it's 33 years that he was alive think of it as 33 degrees of the sun which happens within a year right and how he is born around the uh the new year which is going to be march the ancient new year and he dies when under the same constellation within the new year right as <coughs> you get easter right and um <clears throat> so uh this same time period of the birth right is about the resurrection the rebirth so what do you see you see mark being shot and pushed into the underworld just how jesus went into the underworld right um and <clears throat> and rises again uh, I, I don't mean to um drift off too much but um obviously there's always been a debate of whether jesus was born on december 25th or not it, it doesn't really matter okay the, it, it's become like this this thing okay because um <clears throat> it's how to do with it's to do with how seasons work the height of winter is actually where or uh december 21st is actually where um the sun is at its lowest okay but from that day on after three days of being static the sun rises again so by december 25th it's visible that that the sun sits higher in the sky only by a degree or so well it sits higher than it did december 19th for example right so some some cultures see that as the start of when the sun starts to rise and then there's some that some that attribute it to um march 21st when spring starts so you know the sun is high and the seasons change so it starts to get the the light of the lord starts to happen so there's two, these are two principles that have infected one um sect of belief system and that's that belief system sp spreads into different sects and has different interpretations but in this incident i'm using what the show is using which is the time of his death which is also linked to the time of his rebirth which to me always makes more sense right i've already brought brought down the capricorn and it doesn't really have anything much to do with any birth it's to do with the goat-headed dragon so all right we'll leave it at that okay so people i've got the the, the air dates of the um moon Knight tv show right here and if you have a look, you can see that um, the, f the fourth episode, titled The Tomb, falls on the first day of um, Taurus. Okay. And um, like I said, this is the last episode where uh, Mark kind of is the main character. So this is where the old to Aries ends and the old becomes to the planet venus this is why at the end of the episode you see tarouette um the mother goddess as uh, the la like it brings in the whole mother goddess energies and as you can tell from this episode on is where the switch to the feminine energy happens okay people i'm going to go off on a little tangent here i'm going to speak about the dates and the times and the events that were going on outside the show that the show pays adherence to okay um a quick disclaimer if you do not like modern religion compared to the mythologies of old back out now because we're going to talk about modern religion and how it links to um mythologies of old and of course anything else outside of those religions that may be offensive i sure don't need to make this disclaimer 
quite a few people watch these compared to my video game so and they don't subscribe so i'm sure that they just people just come across it right so like i said please do not be offended but we're going to just go straight in with the truth of things okay let's go so of course the first episode is an it um st sorry the first episode right was aired on the 30th of march 2022 okay so the 30th of march 2022 is where we get their adherence to mars from okay that is under the constellation aries so we know that disney do this so of course it's going to be under the constellation aries but this particular season of um of tv shows was quite special had a lot of things in it going on okay right because obviously the 21st of march okay is the first day of spring it's the first day of the constellation aries okay and of course um it's the first day of easter okay right and um so this is how jesus and mars are linked okay jesus of mars are linked and we're going to get into that when we get into the islamic part uh, side of things which is adhered to as well because of course on the first of april was um the first day of ramadan first of april 2022 is the first day of ramadan right and ramadan is a season that links up to the black moon so every time there is a black moon on any year so that is the same as a lilith moon that the pagans uh, or astrological people follow every time there's a black moon the very next day is eid <clears throat> right so um right so the 21st of april is easter first is um ramadan okay so how does that have anything to do with anything so first of all we've got a, a, a show about as i've explained an allegory towards jesus and mars that will be mark and stefan okay and i'm just going to add this in here real quick you will notice in my maleficent breakdown the king's name was also Stephen. This is a very common name for for, the, for some reason, right? When it comes to occult shows wanting to, to allude to a specific characters. The reason why Stephen's name was Stephen is the same reason in Maleficent is the same reason why Stephen is called Steve. Not because he is Jesus though. It's because he is Adam, okay, in that show. Right? Adam was crowned by god the son of god and crowned by god jesus is the son of god crowned by god okay they're they're actually linked in that in that sh um breakdown i said there's a right side up of adam and a, 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 a upside down of adam jesus is the right side up of adam Je jesus is the one that is the son of god has the knowledge of god and does it correctly jesus is the son of god knowledge of god and falls to the woman right so one's right side up one's upside down okay anyway <coughs> that's just random information let's continue with this right <laughs> anyway um so they both share this name stefan right so stefan is alluding to the son of god crowned right and of course mark is an allusion to mark right okay he's a marksman slash mercenary all the things are tied in there right to this name right so those two characters are linked and in this show they actually inhabit the same body right right i mentioned jesus being born um in the spring right during the spring equinox so this is what i'm alluding to and that's how it's linked to mars okay right so anyway first episode right how is it linked to, to Ramadan though? Okay, so Ramadan, right, we're going to get into Kanshu now. Ramadan is um, the time which the Archangel Gabriel revealed the Quran to mankind through, of course, 
the Prophet Muhammad, right? Okay, and Gabriel uh, or Jabril uh, means messenger of God, okay? And you gotta understand that Mark slash Stephen in this show is a prophet by action. What is a prophet? Somebody who can receive the word of God through angels, okay, or God Himself. So, what is an angel? All that the angels are, their jobs, their titles, right, are the same jobs and titles of the gods of mythology, right? So, you have uh, Gabriel, who is, of course, angel of God, I mean, um, messenger of God. And then you have like Hermes, messenger of the of gods, or you have uh, Mercury, messengers of gods. Okay, Odin, the messenger, right? Okay, and this is linked to Thoth, the Egyptian god of the moon. Thoth, okay. But there, it's also linked to another Egyptian god of the moon, isn't it? That looks a little bit like a bird. Okay, and that'll be. Kanshu. Okay, so let's get into this whole paradigm with the the messenger. Okay, so um, in Egyptian mythology, right, the messenger god is Thoth. Okay, god of the moon. Okay, and we're getting somewhere. All right, Thoth is the god of the moon. He's the god of communication, wisdom, magic, medical knowledge. You name it. Anything to do with wisdom, technology, anything comes from Thoth, okay? Thoth was very revered, okay? The word Thoth is where we get the word thought from, okay? Thoth is directly linked to the word thought. Thinking is Thothing, okay? Right, so he's the god of thought in general. Okay, so of course he is attributed to bringing medical knowledge to mankind. He's um, he has different variations, of course, in other mythologies like Hermes, Odin, um, Mercury, etc., etc. Right, can be linked to Moses as well. Okay, um, he has the symbol Mercury, but his um. When you look into other mythology, he seems to have this stick with us with two binding snakes intertwining. They're called the medical caduceus. Okay, um, just to let you know that this entity is linked to knowledge and, of course, medical knowledge. And like I said, known for bringing medical knowledge to mankind. Okay, right. Um. So remember, this is linked to the. The messenger god, okay, the same principle as Khonshu. In Egyptian mythology, okay, of course, Thoth is the god of the moon, but when it comes to physically manipulating the moon, it is Khonshu that does these things. So when you see in the, t in the show where Khonshu was moving the sky using the moon, right, to rewind the sky back to what it looked like, etc., at a particular time. This is something that um, Kanshu actually does in uh, Egyptian mythology, right? And of course, this act was solicited by Thoth. It is Thoth that gets Kanshu to do these acts, right? So um, he's kind of like the hand of uh, of a uh, Thoth Kanshu is, right? When you look at Marvel's design of Kanshu, it looks nothing like the th the forms of Kanshu, okay? In Greek, in Greek, I mean in Egyptian mythology, in Egyptian mythology, um, Kanshu has um, like a small little tiny beak, okay? Small little tiny beak, but um, Thoth is the one that has the long protruding mouth, okay? Or beak or bill, whatever. Um, 
and for some reason Kanshu has it right when I first was watching the show because I've never seen Moon Knight before I didn't, I didn't know Khan, what Kanshu looked like in the comics or anything I thought oh that's an odd way to make Kanshu look and then as I'm watching the show it's like oh Kanshu is kind of playing Thoth though but here's here's the thing ever heard of the stork okay the stork that brings a baby okay where do we get that from right well if you've been looking on the images that i will have on screen kind of looks like fluff doesn't it or it looks like how country looks in this tv show and the reason why the stork brings a baby right is because birds have always been attributed to medical knowledge since the days of ancient egypt so the doctor delivers a baby right the stork is the doctor the one with the knowledge of thought and if you think this is random because it is but if you think this the way these stuff get into modern things like the idea of the stork during the plagues right doctors used to wear masks right that looked like a bird they were designed randomly to come back um it was used as breathing apparatus to combat of course the plague why would a, a, a doctor design a mask to look like a bird for no reason when you don't need to well it's because this stuff was more known back then and the, the it's the same reason as to why the stalk is a is a mythos or is a myth it's because um it is attributed to thought and medical knowledge okay so the doctor's max is directly linked to thought okay now the reason why i'm saying all this is just to let you know that thought who is another version of a messenger of god all right is the one that gives this stephen and mark the revelation of the end of days okay all right keep that in mind another thing i'm just going to add in there as you can see i uh referenced a lot of religions and versions of thoth Kanshu, and of course um gabriel um The height of Thoth's medical abilities is, of course, curing death. Okay, so this is why, uh, just like Moses, he uses the same medical caduceus to cure the dead. Okay, and why is Mark even alive? Because country brought him back from the dead. I mean, I could just go on and on and on about this character, how it's linked to medical knowledge, scribing, poetry, battle, um, war, you get me? And country represents all these things, okay? But maybe in another video, maybe it will pop up again, okay? But I gotta continue because this video will be like hours and hours and hours long. So let's move into the next part. We're going to move into Taurus, which is because I keep going on about this fourth episode. So we're going to move on to the later half of this this show and get into what's actually going on here. So the fourth episode drops on the the fourth of I mean the twentieth of April, which is the first day of Taurus. Taurus representing the bull and ruled over by the planet Venus. Or the mother goddess okay so we're gonna get into this okay um, the most famous movie you could ever see that represents the constellation Taurus is obviously the movie Beauty and the Beast where Bell <laughs> Bell Beauty um, or Venus uh, is um, literally held hostage by this bull-like animal which is um taurus that has a, a a more beautiful side the zeus side because um the beast represents 
the god Zeus and his form of the bull. Um, check that story out and then check out Beauty and the Beast. It's a very, very similar concept. Okay. Right. Anyway. What is the main principle of the 20th of April? It's, of course, the planet Venus, which is the mother goddess, like I said. Right. And the, the character that, that they get to represent this principle of Taurus is, of course, the goddess Tarawet from Egyptian mythology. OK. Right. So check this shit out. Okay, so in ancient Egyptian mythology, Tarawet was known as the goddess of pregnancy and motherhood. Tarawet was a protector of goddess, was the protector goddess of women and children. The myths about Tarawet initially depicted her as a violent goddess, hence her association with animals such as the hippopotamus. Okay, like Tar <coughs> first of all, let me just say something. Just like on a two-dimensional level, somebody watching this show as a show right listen this this character had better cgi than anything in doctor strange and the multiverse of Man. anything it had better cgi than endgame just just the character alone like they went in they disney wanted to do some adherence to this particular deity right this particular deity in this show represents venus okay right Venus is the goddess of love, okay, which is of course where we get Tarot was a protector goddess of women and children, okay, um, goddess of pregnancy and motherhood, okay, um, and then, you know, Venus is also goddess of war, this is where you get, you know, her violence, hence her association with animals such as the hippo, okay, all mythologies are linked, they seem very, it's very abstract, but well, all mythologies are linked. It's all the same shit. And all that God, the, the children of gods are, and then their children and their children's children are, is literally, right, just them reincarnating or reflecting upon something, right? And that's kind of like what we are, right? Let's say, for example, example you find a particular attribute attractive in a, a, a person of the opposite sex, okay? And then... You want to mix that principle with yourself. Oh, I find that so cute and attractive or so strong and blah, 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 blah. And then you make a version of an amalgamation of yourself and that principle. And that's your child. Well, that's what gods are. Okay. S real simple stuff. Right. Real simple stuff. Right. So the gods are just the same thing over and over again. That's why Saturn and Hades, his son, is the exact same character. Right? The exact same character. Zeus is Hades mixed with the principle of Rhea, the mother goddess, Earth, Tarawet. So, he's not as bad as Hades, okay? So he can't get on with his brother. His brother is exactly the same as his dad, who he had to dethrone because he's a dickhead. And that's why he, he made Hades the god of the underworld, right? But in the Bible, right? In the, in the Bible, right? There's a war in heaven, okay? There's a war in heaven. It just starts off there's a war in heaven, though. You get me? What is that war in heaven? That is the civil war of the, the of Olympia. After Saturn was defeated, right? Um, God had to start it to sh um, divide the angels up into their jobs, okay? So, um, you know what's his name poseidon mr poseidon you go down and you be the king of the water and blah 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 blah, etc etc right but then hades is like nah i should be the sky god you know why should you be the sky god and then you know hades gets cast out he loses he becomes satan the opposer boom and that's why the mythologies of zeus and Satan directly link up, they match. I mean, or Zeus and Hades, sorry. Um, and God and, Sa and Satan, right? It also matches up with the allegory of Saturn or Satan. 
and God himself. Right? It's the same stuff over and over again. Okay? I just got, thought I'd just put that out there and let's continue on with Moon Knight. So, Tarouette appears when um, Mark and, of course, Stephen die. Okay? So, um, and Tarouette meets them in the underworld. Not before they experience hell though they gotta experience hell first and then she pops up she's the ghost in the machine of the underworld and um i'm gonna have to get into explaining the underworld and consciousness right as taro explains to those who are initiated what the fuck was that is like okay she's blabbling on trust me she said some shit okay right let me tell you right but anyway um, let me just say something about Layla real quick, right? As I explained, like, Layla is Venus upside down, okay? Right, she's linked directly to Tauret, who is Venus the right side up. Uh, um, Tauret is the one that is the light bearer, bearer of the scales, okay? Uh, Layla, as her name suggests, is the dark one, okay? They're two opposites, remember, uh, uh, Venus is the bright and morning star. She's the light. She's Lucifer. Okay. So, um, and then of course she has a, her shadow self, which will be, as I explained earlier, not or Nox. But they're, the, they're reflections of each other, light and dark. Okay. That's why they are linked. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so the underworld, what's happening? These got, um, they pass into the underworld. I have mentioned the underworld multiple times on this channel, right? And I'm going to go into it a little bit more. I explain that the the that the underworld is consciousness, okay? Right? It's your own mind, right? The underworld can be found when you go to sleep, okay? Sleep is the cousin of death, okay? Right, so... <coughs> As the show visualizes and Tarot directly explains, let me tell you, um, she calls, call, calls living beings tethered consciousness. So that is just consciousness attached to matter, making it animate, right? So all living beings have access to the to the uh, to the underworld or the, the world of ideas or the world which from which everything sprang so basically in this show when Tarouet describes the realms of the underworld as untethered consciousness right what she basically means is that um, there are there are places in the conscious field world you know the place where you go to where you dream etc etc that are actual principles themselves that exist with without without any um, conscious interaction with the physical world, right? And um, they are always in action, right? And so th this is basically how this philosophy works, <clears throat> and how heaven and hell works, and why why the soul is judged. You're basically um, the state of being that you are in when you die is a reflection of what you will dream when you die and thus um, that principle being the thing that you're in so let's say for example you you, you die and you've got no regrets you've got n nothing on your shoulders you're at peace you'll go to the field of reeds because there's nothing pulling you in there's nothing making you have a nightmare so to speak okay but basically the soul judges itself right and and this is displayed perfectly in this show so when mark and steve die they end up in an asylum and of course um the image of harrow who is supposed to be anubis and he's playing anubis in this moment so um you'll find that his personality is completely different um, Ethan Hawke's performance as the um, 
as the orderly or the uh you know the therapist was perfect because it's completely different from his harold performance and if you pay attention right even though he's being shown to the viewer as the bad guy listen to the conversations what they say and um anubis is trying to help stephen grant right or uh, mark specter by getting him to stop focusing on the things you want to fight for and you know f all that what's in your heart and this is why when he's when he brings up the little boy who he's Mark Spector himself, who's, who's this little boy you mentioned, he just goes nuts, he, he doesn't want to deal with his hell, right, because he's done something bad, and, um, you know, he accidentally got his uh, brother killed by being, like, um, a disobedient youth, okay, and he paid the price, and every time that is poked at him by Anubis, this is to judge, what, because he's, he's, he's judging himself in the dream world, all right, um, you see all the cognitive dissonance happen, right? Um, there's a, there's a lot of things to do with the subconscious as well. That the world that 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 place that is in the asylum is a reflection of his own subconsciousness. Um, you know, you know, Tarot was like, I've never seen so somebody have an asylum before. You know, this is new, and and then. Um, Mark calls it out himself. He's like, it's because we're mad. You get me? He he thinks deep down that he's a little bit insane because he is. Therefore, it's manifested in in his um in his nightmare or his hell, right? And um, this philosophy, this principle of death, like um as as you flow through the death realm and you sleep and you you're not tied to a physical body anymore. This principle is actually played out in the show because as he progresses more and more, the longer he's dead, the further he's getting away from that hell. He's starting to to become. He's starting to get into what's really there, which is the underworld, right? So, and what's really there is on a boat getting his heart judged. That's what's really there, right? And the further he gets away from his memories and his body the more the dream becomes obscure now he's on a boat and he's being dragged into the principle that he is the principle of regret death torment right that's what it represents and then of course when he overcomes this when he overcomes this he's able to get access to heaven or the garden right like um and so this is where you get up out the underworld to the field of reeds or to the heavenly realm or the garden and like i said i explained this garden everything come out the garden if you, if you look when he goes to this field of reeds there's nothing there it's it's ideas it's the blank page right this is why life started in the garden right and um you know because and everything sprang from the garden right because um you know, it's the world of, of ideas that you can paint upon and thus visit. This is what it's getting at when, you know, life started in the garden and, you know, getting kicked out of the garden into the physical world. All right. It's actually amazing that they put these concepts in the show because they are, of course, mythological concepts. I think this stuff was amazingly done. All right. Okay, people. So. With Tarot, I said that she represents Venus, and of course, Venus has got nothing to do with the dead. Um, just like Tarot has nothing to do with the dead, um, Tarot is a fertility goddess. She represents actual birth. Okay, um, so so that goes to that's that's also a clue as to what's going on in the show. But also, it 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 shows that what I'm saying that she doesn't represent that aspect and that the show is trying to say and um the, the goddess that actually represents what tarot is doing is aman amantet 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 however you pronounce it right um amantet is actually the she who guides the, the souls of the dead right and if you pay attention to the show the way um 
Haraway is acting is like a complete noob. She, she's got stuff written down as if like Amon Tech gave her notes of what to actually do. Like she don't know what she's doing. <laughs> right. So um, and um, that's because um, she's filling a role that she does not actually do. Right. It's so she, and this this is about the birth of Moon Knight or the birth of um mark specter because like i said it's about rebirth the whole show is about being reborn right um mark is literally baptized he's baptized into the waters right and that, that's a kind of what bapt baptism is a, a metaphor of this is why i spoke about the finger at the beginning right um it's about pushing souls into the sea of the underworld or the sea of the subconscious right maybe sometime in another video it will pop up for me to to um use to go into that concept more anyway <clears throat> let's move on yeah oh obviously the show pretty much comes up to an end when harold um resurrects Amut and then of course the judgment happens and then of course um you know Moon Knight saves the day as as he would right so but let's get into what what, what some of this stuff is all about right because I've explained the underworld and stuff like that so this when it comes to Harrow and his name right all that a harrowing is 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 to put something through hell right it, this is where you get the concept of the harrowing of jesus and stuff like that it's all in the show right <laughs> everything that i've explained right um so a harrowing is kind of like if you was to harrow someone it's basically like hazing okay uh, and that's that's where you get the link to harrow's name to the concept of what he's doing he's looking to put things through hell and this is the concept of baptism like i was saying like um you know uh pushing into the water right that's just that's rebirth and it you go in into the subliminal to the water back out reborn right so you went, it's it, it's to replicate death and rebirth that's all it is right but harold his actual design the way he acts right i have to mention because he walks around with a stick or or um uh, uh um what's it called a staff okay he walks around with a staff has a bit of a limp has a very very stoic attitude right like it's almost like when he was he's playing harold his acting's almost a little bit bad because he's so monotone and this stuff comes from the actual gods that they're trying to represent. I mentioned Hades earlier. He's known for his stoicness and he represents that exact same principle. Okay. Uh, very stoic, emotionless. Okay. Um, of course, he's linked to the number 20. Like in my occult studies videos, I explain the numbers and stuff like that. So I'm going to explain what. 20 means what it represents okay what the number 20 means is obviously it's a weird number but it represents a reflection of 10 okay so you have the 10 numbers right that represent the basis of all things zero to nine okay and then it's reflection okay so that's life and death okay that's above and below that's why it represents above the 10 and below a reflection of the 10 this is represented by the double cross T 10 is two x's a double cross i don't really know if that makes sense how i can put this right but when you get zero one two three four five six seven eight nine that is all probability and the only numbers that exist any other number is a variation of those numbers at a different frequency so once you get to 10 that is essentially the number one again at a higher frequency right and we're taught math like this about frequencies units tens hundreds thousands those are different frequencies of the same thing you're not going to use any other numbers other than one two three four five six seven eight nine and zero okay now once you get to ten the frequency starts again 
and you get another version of that of the same things right i've kind of explained this a little bit in the hawkeye video when i said that the number 16 is also the number seven and it works the same with every number okay so when you get to 10 that is the wheel of fortune because in the realm of 10 that's the only probabilities that exist so what's happening with the number 20 that is the number 20 reversing back upon itself to to rebirth itself okay that's what it represents if you look at um look into the number 20 it's all about change rebirth etc and and this these concepts like i said you can't invent a concept right and this is I mentioned this in a previous video also I don't remember which one where I said you can't invent anything okay or all you can do is literally see how something works or reverse engineer it or come up with an idea but the idea comes from the same place where all things spring from anyway so the idea isn't your own okay it comes from consciousness okay so you gotta think about it like this when men looked into got to a point where they can see the chromosomes right and they see like yo man's a man has got an x and y and then they saw that a woman has an xx which is the number 20 they must, it must have blew with their mind because what is the only way you can be reborn back onto the planet through a female through the number 20 xx okay and um <sighs> there's so much mythology in the bible and stuff that hints at this thing about the kingdom of god right uh, being reborn through these particular deities that represent the crossroads okay and the the the, the two um crosses sometimes it's across the right side up sometimes it's across upside down okay so like i hope that makes sense all right i really do okay people so i think i need to wrap this video up pretty soon i'm just going to mention one more thing um about the whole mars and um jesus thing okay so obviously on the last episode now it's it's obviously the the hero moment okay and this is basically the show has played out the whole of Jesus's life in a small event, right? His death and his uh, rebirth. So that represents a whole entire year. So when you're reborn, right, you're reborn back into Aries. That's the full year. That's the full year gone round. Back to the head of uh, the head of the zodiac, the first zodiac sign, Aries. So what does that represent? War. So that's why when Jesus is, dies and resurrects, he's back into war. Why is this? Because springtime is wartime for all animals and life forms on the planet because we, f we feel more energized, um, uh, the sun's out, we can see more of the females, we want to acquire the females which causes fighting etc. Throughout the whole animal kingdom, even in the human realm because look at the, when you know gang violence and things like that starts really, it starts soon as spring hits like animals bro straight away you get me now um so as you can see as i've explained in this video that the springtime season and the rise of Aries is linked to both jesus and of course the god of war in islam you have the character madi right this 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 um prophesized person is supposed to come back with jesus at the end of days you get me right so what is that that's the principle that is playing out in the show this is mark and and um stephen co coming back as one okay right so you got isa in right who is jesus in islam and madi right now there's no J's, okay? J's a new invention, so that's how the name Isa managed to happen in the Middle East instead of Jesus, because not many places pronounce J's like that. You get me? Um, it's, it's like uh, Jesus or Sus, 
Oh, it's, it's sa. You get me? It's all just the same shit. You know, I've explained languages and interchangeable vowels a little on this channel. May go into it more in the future. But, um, so you have Isa, who is Jesus in the Quran, comes back with Madi. And that Madi is not hard to decipher through language, okay? Madi is, is the name Mars in many languages. Madi, you got Mardi Gras. You got Madi, as in the day for Mars in multiple European languages also. So you've got Madi, Mars, or the God of War, and Jesus resurrecting right to bring about a new world and i'm gonna end it at that right <laughs> we'll leave it there thank you everyone for watching this video all the way to the end because this is a long ass video so if you made it to this part thumbs up okay thumbs up you made it anyway um with that said i would also like to address something thing um This whole concept of the underworld, okay, is a very interesting concept, right? Now, if you would like to see me go in on this concept further, I will actually remake my Alice in Wonderland video. However, however, I need at least about three to four, maybe five comments requesting this otherwise i'm not doing it. it takes way too much effort right so if you would like to see me break down the movie all the symbolism all the rituals and stuff that are hidden in the show and uh, why that movie is so famous it's the most famous movie on the planet low key okay so why is alice in wonderland so famous what is that storytelling I will break that shit down to a T like this video, right? Um, if you would like to see that, like I said, comment below, all right? Uh, this has been Lokiman07. Peace out, people. Peace.